creative ways of like how you can get and acquire money into your enterprise. Um, so this is something, again, that me and Nathan do a lot for Todd and Craig and the whole system itself. Um, Todd just thought it'd be a great idea to kind of a crazy market right now. Um, how can we have more streams of income to make it more predictable and to not be in this cash flow crunch? <clears throat> so we've got about 14 or 15 ways outlined here, Nathan, that we can spend some time on. Um, so the easiest one that um, people commonly either do a really good job or don't even think about doing is um, getting paid multiple times per transaction. Um, so when it comes to vendor income, um, you can get paid directly from the settlement or people who aren't even involved in the settlement. Um, people that are involved in the settlement, think of the title company, the closing attorney, the mortgage company, um, the home warranty company, the home inspection company. Everybody that you're doing business with now, they will happily write you a check on every transaction that you send them. The only reason they're not doing it is because you are not asking for it. Um, so I've kind of put some averages or what it should look like here um, across the board. Um, whether you're doing title, mortgage, home warranty, home inspection, homeowner's insurance, all of this. It's all opportunities for you guys to get paid additional money per sale. Um, so Nathan, what are some pushbacks that you see of people not doing this? Like, why are they not getting paid um, from their vendors if they're already like doing business with them? I will say I'm actually shocked at the number of people who aren't collecting money on a lot of different avenues and ways. And most of the time, it's just because they don't really have the time to be able to put into it, or they didn't have put the people in play to actually go and get this money. So, you know, that that would I would say be one of the top things or they're hesitant to ask. I've been dealing with these people for 10 years. I don't want to change the relationship or the business relationship due to asking for money. Well, at this point, like you guys are just sending referrals for referral sake. I mean, by all means, if you want to send all your referrals uh, to Georgia and uh, hand them over to us and not pay a single and not have us pay you guys anything for the referral fee, you guys wouldn't do that. So the difference is now you guys just got to do that with your vendor partners. Um, you know, I, I will say I was shocked and Chase, I know you probably were too. When we first like probably we sat down and Todd came to me and was like, yeah, you just go in and you're just going to go into the closing company. I need you to start paying for yourself. So you're just going to get the closing company. You're going to get the mortgage company. You're going to get the home warranty company. You're going to get the inspection company. They're all going to start paying us more money. So you're just going to go in, you're going to walk in and you're basically going to pay for yourself by increasing uh, all of the income from all of these companies. We didn't have a, a inspection company at the time. And um, there was a couple other there. We increased our title money and then we added a new title company. And, uh, and then we added another mortgage company when I first came in. And I was shocked at like how easy and simple it was. It's like, well, one, you just got to almost sit down and ask. And once you ask, uh, it has to be positioned as a win-win. Always, 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 this has to be a win-win. If it's not a win-win, the vendor walks away, they go away, and uh, you're left with a bitter taste in your mouth because you put the time, energy, and effort to putting this in. They let it leave with a bitter taste because they feel like you did them wrong. So this has got to be set up as a win-win for the company, for both companies. Yes, and uh, something I do want to address, um, Nathan, is a lot of people in the past, I'm um, just being transparent, is they've set up MSAs or marketing service agreements, and they get paid a flat fee every month to spend for marketing. Uh, you can do that, but being completely transparent, it's not going to end well. It's going to end in a divorce because they're going to wake up one day and be like, I'm not getting enough. The relationship is not beneficial. Or two, you're going to feel like you're giving them more than what they're paying for. Um, so I would encourage you to do is get paid a percent of every single deal. Um, one, it makes the business better. Everyone gets paid at the same time. No one's fronting anything or it's a negative cash flow cycle. So I, we cannot overstate the importance of getting paid a percent of every single sale or referral. And then um, go a step further. Uh, so think about every person that you're helping buy or sell a place they call home and every vendor and every product and service they use post-sale. Um, we've outlined a few here um, that they are doing business with. You're just not capitalizing on. So it's a missed opportunity to not get paid for the work you're already doing. And I'm sure your landscaper, your roofing guy, your plumbing guy would have no problem writing you the check if you just send them the business or if you ask for it. Anything there, Nathan? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I 
talk a little bit about um, with what you do. And you, I don't know if you're about to go into this here soon, but uh, about how you have regular meetings with these vendors and um, how that looks, what you guys go over, the data that you guys go over, and how you guys talk about this being a win-win and you know keeping the partnership alive. Because that is something that I feel like a lot of people, they just strike these deals and um, then it ends up becoming like someone feels like one side's benefiting, the other side isn't. So how do you get, how, how do you have these meetings regularly, Chase, to where you like, uh, you know, the, it, the relationship doesn't go sour? Yeah, so yeah, great question, Nathan. And um, I say a lot of people, um, before they even get to that point of like how they um, foster and maintain the relationship is like, how do they get it to begin with? Um, so it's really straightforward. Um, I've got a basic process right here of like how to go about this. Um, you start with basic like, who am I doing business with now? Um, make a list of five to 20 people. And then you time block once you have a list of people you're going to pursue here. It's like, hey, um, you meet down with your mortgage guy. You meet down with your home inspection guy. Um, this is the, what my vision is for my company. And this is where I want you to be involved with so we can both achieve what we most want. And you present the past 12 months of data. And then you vision cast where this thing's going to go. I'm increasing X, Y, and Z. As a result, it seems like you're going to get this many deals. Um, what's that worth? And then once you set up the closing on the money and you, you really evaluate or you put a number to what that's worth, um, you meet every quarter. Every quarter you sit down with these people and you ensure you're both on the same page and you're achieving the outcome you want. 